Hello everyone. My name is Sebastian Addo. I'm currently a student at Liberty University and I'm pursuing my master's in public health with concentration in health promotion. Today, I want to discuss with you my research on how knowledge and risk beliefs of electronic cigarette impact adolescent electronic cigarette use. E-cigarette use, also known as vaping, among adolescents have been identified as a behavior of concern. The U.S. Surgeon General has identified the increased use of electronic cigarettes and other vaping devices among adolescents as an urgent public health problem. According to the Centers for Disease Control, in 2020, 19.6% of high school students, making up 3.02 million, and 4.7% of middle school students, making up 550,000, reported current e-cigarette use. Findings from the 2018 Florida Youth Tobacco Survey suggest that one in three youth ages 11 to 17 has used a tobacco product. E-cigarettes are the most used tobacco products. Approximately one in four youth, which make up 25%, has tried vaping as against one in 28, which made up 4% in 2012. E-cigarette use comes with plethora of health risk to users, just like any tobacco product. For example, nicotine found in vapes is a highly addictive substance that can be adversely affecting of several body systems. Also, e-cigarettes generally contain chemicals and constituents which are particularly harmful to youth by affecting their developing brains causing long-term effects on cognitive ability, mental health, and personality traits. So how did we get the data? A total of 138 participants were drawn with parental consent from North Jacksonville, Florida, aged between 11 to 19 years. Participants' knowledge on electronic cigarettes was accessed using five basic health risks and safety questions. For example, whether e-cigarettes contain nicotine or whether vaping can cause long-term health problems, etc. Participants also answered questions whether they ever used e-cigarettes and whenever they did, they were categorized as ever users. And if they said no, they were categorized as never users. For data analysis, descriptive analysis was used to characterize e-cigarette knowledge. Chi-square was also used to compare e-cigarette never users and ever users and t-tests were also used for continuous outcomes. Never users were denoted with zero and ever users one. A multivariate logistic regression analysis was used for prediction using a bivariate analysis with a probability threshold of P less than 0.10. So for the results, uh, the participants' characteristics, we have 48% uh, male and 48% female and 4% gender non-conforming. The mean age for the group was 16.33 with standard deviation at 0 0.89. For race distribution, we have whites making up 45% of the participants. Hispanics making up 17% and 
African American making 29% and the Asian population making up 9%. The group was classified into four categories for descriptive purposes. Of the groups, 23 had never used tobacco products. 17% were currently using tobacco. 12% were non-susceptible, never smokers. And 41% were susceptible, never smokers. 74% of respondents are aware of the risk factors regarding health problems, which can lead to long-term effects. About 59% of the participants knew e-cigarette usage has some risk factors, and 67% also knew that e-cigarettes contain harmful liquids. A little under half the respondents, which is 49%, knew that e-cigarettes may harm teens' brain development. So I have a table over here which describes how the knowledge was computed for the various questions that were given to the participants. Uh, we, the distribution was put into two categories, ever users and never users. And then the mean and standard deviation were calculated for those groups corresponding with the answers that were given by the participants and the p-value for each question was also computed. So for lessons learned, we have realized from analysis and computation, the research suggests that adolescents generally have some knowledge about e-cigarette risk, but the knowledge doesn't necessarily affect behavior change. It was also found out that adolescents who have never, who have used e-cigarettes in the past or continue to use e-cigarettes were more likely than never users to discredit the fact that e-cigarettes were bad for their health. Finally, the research found out that adolescents perceive e-cigarettes as less harmful than traditional cigarettes. This suggests that adolescents do not entirely understand or appreciate the risk of addiction. There is recommendation which says there is the need to increase health literacy among adolescents regarding the nature and serious consequences of addiction. This brings my discussion to a close. Thank you for your time.